Chicken livers for striped bass? It's true, folks. I hit the West Delta with Jack Knaves this April, and we enjoyed outstanding striper action while soaking livers. With an area of low pressure moving in, we started the day on the troll, but when that failed to produce, we quickly switched over to bait fishing. Okay, now Jack's hooked up. We'll see if he can land his. We've lost a couple to sea lions here. We'll see, uh, see if we can get this one to the boat. Hopefully the sea lion's full now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, that looks like a good fish. Yeah, it's probably deeper. I do have a big sinker on here, but... Yeah, I think it'll be a little keeper. Check it out here. We'll get back to the striper action in a bit, but before we do, let's learn how Jack rigs those chicken livers. So here we are, we're on the San Joaquin River, we're fishing for stripers. Um, Cal Kellogg here with Jack Naves, and Jack is going to show us how he uses chicken liver to catch stripers. Yeah, so basically, I just buy chicken livers at the supermarket. You know, I get a lot of them, about 10 to 15 pounds, and just grab a glob of it. And we're using circle hooks here. You can see how that thing kind of bends around. And I'm using the straight shank style circle hooks, snelt, just like this. It seems like the best way to hook them. And what I do is I just hook it through a bunch of times to get it on there in the first shot. And with these eight aughts like this, you want more than one chunk of liver you probably want a couple you know don't be shy with the bait because you know the keeper stripers especially when the water's above 55 56 they're gonna grab this this big bait you don't have to worry about small baits until the winter time so I'm gonna lob up you know a couple pieces like that now I'm gonna use this miracle thread which is a elastic thread and I'm gonna wrap it around about 15 times so I basically just kind of grab it with one hand Kind of like that just to get it started and then once you get it started I make about 15 wraps around the, the bait you know on, around the shank of the hook and basically you want it kind of just bleeding out all that scent and juice and that seems to really bring the stripers in and once you got it kind of like that you kind of just snap it off and you want it on these circle hooks so that the shank's not impeded by anything. So you don't want to be wrapping it like up here above the hook because that's going to keep them from getting hooked. So what's going to happen is they're going to eat it. It's going to pull right into the corner of their mouth like that. And that's how you're going to hook them on these circle hooks. So that's really your, going to be your bait on liver. Now with the other types of baits, you want it hanging off like shad or sardines or anything. You kind of want to just hook it through and have it hanging down the same way so that doesn't impede that circle hook shank because they're going to grab it and get them like that every time when they when they pull it away. So I usually just I'll kind of wash it off. As you can see, it's really messy. Good to have a splash well. If you don't have a splash well, you can just use a big like storage bin or a bucket or something in the bottom of your boat to keep that all that stuff off. You dip in water a few times, it's going to get most of the blood and stuff off. So that at least that way when you cast, it's not going to leave a big mess in your boat. So that's the basics of it right there. So let's see if we can... Fishing the West with Kel Kellogg is brought to you by Penn Fishing Tackle, Abu Garcia Big Game Reels, Cousins Tackle Premium American Fishing Rods, and The Fish Sniffer, the premier source for West Coast fishing information since 1982. Okay, let's get back to those awesome Delta Stripers. Right, we've got a stripe rod chicken liver. We'll see if this one's a keeper. Feels pretty good. Hard to tell though. It's a thousand pounds sea lion I had on felt real good. <laughs> Striper. Very cool. And he did like that chicken liver. That's amazing. Well, 
That looks like it's going to be a keeper. Yeah, it felt pretty good. Took some line. There we go. Yeah, that's about a four pound fish. Pretty nice one. Nice, see how. nice eating size. Yeah, good eating size. He's got that circle hook. Just got him right there in the corner of the mouth. Yeah. You know, that's just how you want to get him with these. Perfect. You basically let them swim off, let them hook themselves against your tight drag, and, and they're on. And once you got them like this, they're not getting off. These circle hooks really stay in good. So, nice little fish. Jack's hooked up again. That was almost a double hookup in a way. Just landed one fish. We're getting ready to bleed it, and uh, his rod went off. Let's do a second fish. Yeah, you know, they cut through in schools when you're anchored up like this, and you tend to get one after the other of the same size. So if you get one keeper, you know, you hope you're going to get another one. So what's the importance of the of the soft rod? Why do you use a soft rod, Jack? I think uh, it just keeps them from, from feeling the... the, the tension on the line initially and it kind of just loads up and then when it loads up until it gets tight then it just hooks them in the corner of the mouth with the circle load. Awesome. Yeah, this, this is a shaker though. <laughs> it's a uh, feisty shaker. But it's feisty. Yeah. Oh yeah. No. Yeah, and that's the great thing about the circle hook is they're all really releasable. We're not hurting them. I'm sure they're not happy about it, but we're not harming them. Yeah. Alright, so we're going to bleed this stripe rod that we just caught. It's important to bleed these fish out, and pretty much any fish you catch, because it gets the blood out of the meat. It just makes them taste better and the meat keeps a little longer too. So if you're going to keep a fish, what you want to do is first knock it out with a club or something like this. And then there's a lot of different ways that you can do it. Some people cut the gills. Um, some people actually make incisions by the heart. What I do is I just take a long pair of needle nose pliers. I get right in here, just grab a gill and just, just pop it out like that. And you can see that right away it's just gushing blood. And that's why you want to do it right away by their heart is still pumping, but you just want to knock them out first. So, you know, you just come in, pop a couple of those gills out, and then you want to keep them wet, because if you don't, the blood will actually clot. So you either want to hang them on a stringer, if they're really big ones, or uh, just keep them in a wet bucket like this. Just, if you hang them on a stringer, just watch for sea lions, because they will zone in on your fish, and they'll take it, especially if it's salmon. That's a well-known fact. But, uh, Basically, you can see that this fish is just gushing blood now, and I'm just going to leave it in the water for a couple minutes here, head first, just let him kind of just sit there and bleed out, and then when I'm down, I'll just shake it a little bit to get the blood off, and then he's going on ice. And you want to keep your fish on ice, you know, you don't want to just leave him laying in the boat. Ice is going to keep him really good, so that's just one tip for me. Okay, I'm back at home. I'm in my kitchen. I've got my striper fillets here. I've got some Louisiana beer batter here. I'm going to deep fry my striper fillets. But before I do that, I'm going to trim them. And I want to show you how to trim striper fillets. Now, when we were out on the water, Jack bled these fish. So I know the, the quality is going to be outstanding. But there is some red meat on all striper fillets. And it tends to have a really strong oily flavor. And most people just don't like that taste. Trimming the fillets is a really important aspect of having top quality striper meat, so let's go through that process. I won't show you how to fry the fish, you know how to fry fish, but I think it's critically important that you understand how to trim your fillets. So let's get to it. Okay, so here's a couple striper fillets. You can clearly see that red meat. It kind of lies along where the lateral line would be, and it's really easy to remove. I've got a fairly sharp knife here, nice Kershaw fillet knife. What I do is I just, I'm just going to make an incision and kind of cut down in there on an angle and uh, just take my time, 
and identify where that red meat is sitting and just kind of work at it until I until I can remove it without wasting a lot of uh, of the good meat and it comes away pretty easy and you know you don't have to be a fanatic about it you don't need to get every speck of it off there. there's a little piece of skin left there but that's about good enough for me I might take a little more out of here just to be thorough but that's really about it so that one I, I consider that one finished and this one here I can tell this one's gonna be even easier because this is very well defined where it's at right there knife back in there like so ease it out and that's about it I might just take a little just a little hair off right here it feels like there's a little bone left in there so let me just take that whole little strip off there like that there we go all that's left is I need to cube these up for the deep frying process but with that red meat off there these are going to be sweet, awesome tasting fillets. Split that down. And uh, I'm really looking forward to dinner tonight. Okay, so here we go. I've got a bowl of cubed up striper fillets here. I've got a paper towel in there. I rinsed them off, but I don't like my fish meat to sit in a bunch of water so that paper towel will kind of absorb it. Um, it's going to be a few hours before my wife gets home from work, so I'm going to pop these back in the fridge, let them get nice and chilled, nice and firm. Then when she gets home, I've got a, a big tub of uh, bacon fat in my fridge. I'm going to take it outside my electric skillet, melt it down, batter these uh, fillets up. I'm going to fry them. I'm probably going to make some onion rings, and uh, we are going to eat good tonight. Catch me next time. I'm signing off. This is Cal Kellogg.